Hello everyone, Jordan Green Building Council here and we are delighted to be part of World GBC's 24-hour seminar. Today we will be talking about Nazira in Jordan. I'm Dana Sharar Green Academy Officer and Project Coordinator at Jordan Green Building Council. So today we will be tackling these topics that you can see in the agenda in our very, very brief session. First, allow me by just introducing Jordan Green Building Council. As you are all aware of and know, we are a nonprofit, non governmental organization that was established in 2009. Our mission, vision, and value aim to increase the green built environment in Jordan. Our latest strategy that we are focusing on health and well being in buildings, carbon neutrality, green policies, and green growth according to the national plan, which you can see it is aligned with Jordan's Green Growth National Action Plan that was developed by the Ministry of Environment and GGTI. So, how do we achieve these strategies? We do that through having four main pillars, which include membership services, advocacy, awareness and capacity building, research, and innovation. For membership, we have these types of memberships such as corporates, universities, individuals, and students. As for our second pillar, advocacy, what we do is we connect the public sector with the private sector, we prepare policy papers, and have strategic planning. For our third pillar, awareness and capacity building, our Green Academy, we have training courses, awareness sessions, and workshops, along with our teams and internationally accredited faculty. As for our final and fourth pillar, research and innovation, we work on research, global projects, local and regional projects. An example of the research that we do is the Jordan GBC booklets, which you can scan through this QR code that you can see. Uh, we work to develop informative booklets to guide people, public, experts, anyone interested in green buildings and the different green buildings aspects in Jordan. The latest booklet that we've developed is Net Zero Buildings in Jordan. It focuses more on residential buildings. However, it is a great informative booklet and today's session is inspired by this booklet. So before we dig deep, let me just give you the situation in Jordan, a brief about that. So Jordan is right here. It's this little red dot. We are here. And just a few facts and figures, basic ones that you need to know about Jordan. So our population is 10.2 million. We have 310 days of sunshine. The energy imported is a little under 80%, which has been uh, largely increased over the last couple of years. So the total carbon dioxide emissions per capita in Jordan is 2.6. And just for your information, this is uh, the total carbon emissions for Jordan from 1990 to 2019. And as you can tell, from 2050 to 2020, we have witnessed a drop. So we've seen these uh, figures about Jordan, and now you know Jordan a little better. How is Jordan adapting green measures? Let's get to that. Before we talk about net zero measures, how are they adapting green measures? Firstly, Jordan as a signatory or as part of the 2015 Paris Agreement that the United Nations Climate Change Convention brought. So this is one start of how we are contributing to green measures in Jordan or how committed we are to that. Also, we have national Jordanian programs such as JREF, which is Jordan's Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, Efficiency Fund, Greater Amman Municipality, and Joyal Scientific Society, which are all working on different aspects of bringing green measures to Jordan, whether it was through uh, focusing on renewable energy and energy efficiency, spreading that to the public in partnership with NGOs and the private sector, such as JRE is doing, as well as RSS. RSS focused more on green buildings as they collaborated with the National Building Council in Jordan, and they have published the Jordan Green Building Guide in 2012. As you can see, these are the categories of the guide, and the guide as well has a certification system on a basis of five certification levels, which are A, B, C, D, and the certified level. As for Greater Amman Municipality, um, Greater Amman Municipality in 2015 established a sustainability strategy with two main goals, as you can tell, uh, or as you can read on the screen, which are planning, zoning, and developing a city that grows efficient, efficiently and achieves the requirements of sustainability. It also works on ensuring the implementation of sustainability and utilization of renewable energy. In the various section, we're going to discuss this a little further. Let's discuss how Jordan is working towards net zero. Jordan GBC was the second country in the Arab region to join the call for the Advancing Net Zero Global Project, which is working towards total sector decarbonization by 2050. 
what we have done is we have created a steering committee, an advanced net zero steering committee, and a roadmap to have started to officially work on in mid 2021. This was the project phasing for the steering committee. We have included that phase one had uh, or covered net zero energy implementation and phase two net zero carbon implementation. Uh, I would just like to tell you that net zero energy implementation, the project and the deliverables were launched in February of 2022 and currently we are starting net zero carbon, which is phase two of our steering committee. Just to give you a quick recap of phase one and the work that we have done. So uh, we had a subcommittee, uh, three subcommittees actually, uh, working on three different deliverables, certification scheme, pilot project and training. These uh, subcommittees included over 24 individuals, ranging from experts, PhD holders, university students, and fresh graduates. So this is an example of the deliverables that were, um, that were done throughout phase one, or the outcomes. We have the net zero energy guidelines as one outcome. The second outcome was the pilot project or case study, which covered a courtyard house in Jordan. Basically, this house was taken as a pilot project or as an example, and it had all the implementations done for it to become a net zero house. The third deliverable was the awareness session material. We're using part of the material today as well. Uh, and these are the targeted audience that we aim to reach the awareness material to, including university students, private sector, public sector, municipalities, and so on. This slide shows how the steering committee met the SDGs or is still meeting the SDGs, as you can see. So we've discussed the work that we've done in the steering committee. What were some of the barriers of net zero buildings that we had to face? And again, allow me to mention that these barriers were done through research and are also listed in the net zero booklet in Jordan, which we have discussed earlier on. So the barriers, as you can see listed, include social barriers, just the barriers, technical barriers. And these barriers arise from mal implementation during the construction phase and incorrect occupants behavior during the operation stage of net zero building. So these barriers, are kind of not allowing us to achieve net zero buildings in Jordan. And therefore, we will also discuss these barriers and then the mitigation process required to overcome them. Basically, for social barriers, we're talking about general misconception about net zero. So people would focus net zero on installing renewable energy to offset the energy. They would focus on water consumption. They would, fo they would focus on carbon emissions without actually the consideration of energy efficiency strategies. And why is this an issue here? Because achieving net zero buildings without efficiency strategies is actually very costly. So it would be a higher cost approach. In addition, energy efficiency, efficiency strategies result with multiple non-energy benefits such as improved comfort and resilience, which is key in health and well-being in Milton. For the second social barrier we're discussing, efficiency measures are actually costly and non incentivized. So this is something that we will also mean to, mean to overcome later on. As for the third uh, point in social barriers, there is a lack of interest and motivation to embrace net zero buildings due to the perception that they are, as we said, costly and they require longer design and construction periods. Obviously, when there is no guideline, there is no reference, not everyone's going to be aware of that and misconceptions and perceptions are always going to be there. As for the fourth point, tenants who are willing to apply the net zero approach might face a barrier due to the lack of awareness from buildings owner. Again, we are back to the awareness point here. As for the second uh, barrier, the gist of barriers, here we're talking about codes. Codes, we have great codes in Jordan, however, they are not mandatory for the res residential sector. Two, we also have lack of national reference about methods and about implementation of net zero and carbon buildings in Jordan. So what do we mean by this point? We have a lack of comprehensive national reference, as we have said, that contains technical instructions about methods and implementations of net zero buildings. So most existing residential buildings, we have to note that they do not comply with the baseline. Therefore, there is a lack of implementation again, and we have to focus on this point. Three is the lack of national carbon offset programs. This is the concept of the carbon offset certificates. So this is the diagram it will show what we are doing here. 
And basically, you know, such pro programs can sell certification for building owners who are looking for offset strategies to achieve a net zero building. Renewable energy certificates and carbon offset certificates are examples that can guarantee that the offset sources are operated by environmental practices. Therefore, it is crucial for us to have that. As for the technical barriers, they are a bit more simple than the others. Uh, basically, the first barrier we have is incorrect construction and operation practices. This may lead to much higher energy and water consumption as well as embodied carbon emissions compared to estimates made in the design stage. As for the second point, we also have an inaccurate estimate of energy and water consumption and materials quantities in the design stage. This will lead to high deviations between the design calculation and the actual consumption uh, or quantities needed for the construction phase. For the third point, we also have the lack of skills and expertise across the construction sector. The workers, the constructors, or the contractors in the field of the net zero buildings do not have enough knowledge. This will result in increased costs for working compared to traditional buildings or with traditional. We have just we discussed the barriers. How can we overcome them? How can we mitigate these barriers in order for us to actually start implementing net zero practices in Jordan? For social barriers, we have to focus on, first of all, developing code improvement proposals and voluntary programs that encourage and support the construction of net zero buildings. Also, we have to focus on developing education and awareness programs tailored for concept, implementation, benefits and environmental assets of net zero buildings, as we have done in phase one. Dedicating as well studies and research efforts to develop national energy and material references that, for example, contain con conversion factors for embodied carbon and uh, embodied carbon uh, emissions and embodied energy. Also, we have to focus on increasing governmental subsides and incentives for renewable energy technologies and other low carbon and efficiency product technology because incentives would actually encourage the owners, the contractors, the uh, stakeholders to become part of net zero, especially when, when it's governmental, obviously. As for the second barriers of legislative barriers, we are talking about initiating national carbon offset programs, as we have mentioned. These will include renewable energy projects and forestation slash reforestation projects. Two, collaboration of authorities and ministries, bringing everyone together, involving in the building, construction, and environmental sector. This will allow us to introduce policies for encouraging and implementing net zero buildings in Jordan. Some of these ministries that can work on these projects could be Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Public Works and Housing, Ministry of Water and Agriculture, as well as, for example, Jerif, as we have mentioned earlier, uh, NEPCO, NETCO, and so on. So it is crucial for us to collaborate with the authorities and ministries. For three, engaging net zero designers and contractors in policy making. Again, putting everyone responsible uh, or taking part in net zero buildings, whether it's construction policy makers in one room, including them all together. This will allow them to reflect their experience in the field of net zero buildings, design and construction. Also for the fourth point, emerging national incentives to encourage building owners to adopt net zero measures and the application. Again, we're talking about forcing implementation, we're talking about incentives to encourage buildings. So these would be key points to overcome the barriers that we have mentioned earlier. Finally, how can we overcome the technical barriers? Well, for starters, we can develop a nationally applicable template with all the specification for building components and systems which are commonly used in the net zero buildings. Also, what we can do is establish a database, this database of the latest technologies and national market trends for the most energy efficient systems and construction materials with low carbon emissions. This database can be best developed in a one-step web portal, and it should be regularly updated and continuously updated with the implementation, the benefits, and environmental assets of net zero building. And therefore, anyone can have access to this database, and it would be easier for them to know of net zero buildings. For the third point, we're collecting data from net zero building owners. Why is that? So basically, if we connect data to evaluate the performance of their buildings by measuring and reporting the energy use intensity. 
So what we do here is we increase government uh, we, eva sorry, we evaluate energy use intensity for the building can help actually setting a benchmark for energies uh, for net zero buildings in Jordan. And as for the fourth point, which is specification and design guideline, so basically to mitigate construction mistakes. So the contractor must follow the specification and design guidelines. If the contractor does that, this would increase governmental subsides and incentives for renewable energy technologies and other low carbon and efficiency products and technologies. So basically, today, in a very brief, uh, hopefully not too long presentation, we have told you a little about the situation in Jordan, where Jordan is most importantly, and how net zero is being implemented there, with the barriers that we are now trying to overcome with these, um, with these recommendations. Thank you all for listening. We hope it wasn't too long. And if you need any further information about anything in this presentation, please get back to us through these emails. Looking forward to hear from you soon again.